Hello and welcome to this recorded seminar for Marketing 1311. This seminar is divided into three main parts. Finding sources and source citations through the library's catalog and databases, getting help from the library, and then formatting an MLA style paper. To begin, this is the main CTC website if you come here to academics, and by the way, if you see this little white line, you have to wait for it to scroll all the way to the end for this box to stay put. And what you'll do is under library, you'll click on databases. And what you're seeing here is a listing of the various database subjects that we have. Uh, the best thing to do is to click on a subject heading that best meets the subject criteria that you're intending to write about. So in this case, I'm clicking on business and economics, and there is a very nice one that deals with marketing. It's this one here, business entrepreneurship. Now, the first time you come to the, uh, the databases, you're gonna to come to the database login screen. Your username, will be a lowercase c followed by the first seven digits of your CTC ID number. Your password will be your first and last initials in capital letters, followed by your six digit birth date. So logging in. And this is uh, Gale Business Entrepreneurship. Now there are some topics of interest here that uh, you can look at and see if there's anything of interest. This is designed for people to um, help them start up businesses, but also to learn about business. Then you have down here uh, topics that you can browse. You'll notice that we have like market research and marketing right here that are um, topic pages. So I'm gonna click on marketing and this gives you a topic page article. And when you click on read more, you have the ability to get uh, an overview of the different types of marketing. For instance, digital marketing, marketing operations, social and holistic marketing. And then down here, you'll see the source citation that you can then copy and paste directly into your paper. A couple of little words. Um, you no longer need the access date if there is a publication date. Also, the URL uh, this bit right here uh, is not the permalink. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what you'll do is just copy this into your paper, remove the access date, and then up here where it says get link, it'll give you the permalink. And actually all that's missing is this bit here, the HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. So this is how you would get the, the permalink in this particular database. Some of the other features that you'll see with um, this particular database platform is over here you have a translate feature and it will translate the article into any one of these 25 um, different languages and this is Russian. You can see it's very very quick. If you don't want it in a language <coughs> you can cancel and it goes back to English. These next two icons allow you to decrease the size of the font or increase the size of the font. If you have reading disabilities, you can click on the display options where you can change the color of the background. You can also change the font to make it easier to read or you can also change uh, the line, letter, or word spacing as what meets your needs. Uh, and when you click on done, it will remember your settings. So if you're on your own computer, this is something you can set and have it remain pretty much permanent across any of the Gale platforms. Otherwise, I can go there and just go back to my default. Over here on the right, you have explore more items like this. So if you find an article that is very good, you can um, use this to help find more articles. And then you also have over here, related subjects. Now the icons that you'll see over here, uh, you have the ability to upload the article directly to your Google Drive or OneDrive account. 
make sure you're logged into your account before you upload otherwise it goes to the library you can email it to yourself and what I like suggesting is just to click on it and check down here for the send as options if you see one that says PDF I would email that article to your um, to yourself basically what you'll the reason for that is the PDF version gives you the article the way it appeared in print which will give you page numbers and basically what you'll do is put in your email address as the recipient and as the sender and then if there's a message in here or some little note that you want um, that will come with and then you just click on send then up here you have again um, an icon for citing and you can change it if you need it's very easy um, then you can also download it or you can email it and then you can also print it so these icons pretty much do what these do here so that's how this works now if I go back to my results down here you'll notice I have business plans recommended resources I have videos that I can use directories I have audio files magazines and journals newspaper articles and websites now I'm going to click first on magazines and journals and this allows me to see I've got almost 8900 items in here um, now a little bit of warning here what you can do is you can limit this by article you can also go and say I want reports or columns or interviews cover stories so you have a variety of things here I'm just going to use uh, the articles for now um, now when you're reading these through these um, article listings when you see something that is in the tens of thousands of words like right here this one is 705 words um, something that is that long is going to be an academic journal article and your professor may not want you to use any of those but what you can do is um, you can come and click on an article and you can see what kind of information there is with marketing in this if you don't see anything specific you can do a control F and type in your keyword and what it will do is it will highlight where it found that word uh, in the document and if you say highlight all of them it makes it that much easier to spot um, so this may be a way of getting information now something I'll point out is right here where it says byline Stephen Jones if I come here to the site you'll notice that Stephen Jones um, is not given in the source citation so when you're capturing your source citations if you don't have an author listed check to see if there is the byline at the top of the article because for some reason when they do their source citations they do not include the byline unless it says author up here it won't show up so um, every so often somebody forgets to put that in its proper spot so that's how that works um, if I oh by the way there are several types of articles that you're going to find um, like academic journal articles those are research papers um, the popular magazines that you find say in bookstores or at the grocery store those are just regular magazines and then you've got something called trade publications like this one here this is grocer uh, grocer is a trade magazine for people in the grocery business uh, basically think of it this way uh, the article is written by people in the grocery business for people in the grocery business so this is just something to be um, aware of and then uh, you have a variety of other things here so uh, let's see 
something like this. Let me see whether or not, nope, these are all HTML articles, but this gives you sort of an idea of what you can do here with that. Now, if I come back here to the filter your results, you have the ability to filter results by publication date. So if your professor says that the articles can't be more than, say, three years of in age, what you can do is just click on that little box, choose um, what year that you want, I'll go back to 2023, and then click on the first of the month. That puts that date in this first box. And then the second box, what you can do is just click on the last day of the month and then tell it to apply. And that brings it down to like 58 articles. They're all within that same time period. If you don't want to limit by date, you can use a search by subject. And then you have this information here. So if you're looking at just plain marketing, you could do something like that. If you're wanting to search within um, this, you can type in marketing, and that way you can focus in very quickly on items dealing with marketing plans. And ah, here's one that has that PDF that I was mentioning before. So this would be something, if I like that article, that I could pick up. Uh, this is coming from the Journal of Managerial um, Issues. So this is something that would be considered an academic journal. Okay, so that is how Gale works, uh, how the Gale platform works. Now, we do have a couple of other databases that you might find of use. For instance, if you're needing demographics or statistics, you can actually come here, there's one called Statista, and it is a statistics database. That's all it really does. It does have articles in it, but you can see like social media use, e-commerce, artificial intelligence, Netflix, global inf uh, inflation, sustainability, gaming, that sort of thing. So if you wanted to look at like uh, social media usage, uh, you have this ability in here. You have tables of contents, overviews, regional leading statistic, uh, leading social media usage. And so what we can do is come here and see what kind of information there is. This will give you an idea of um, the material that you'll get. You can download these things as a PDF file, as an Excel spreadsheet, as a graphic or for PowerPoint. Um, this will give you the source information that you can then, you'll have to manually build your um, source citation, but it does give you the information as what you would need for your source citation. And then you can also expand the um, statistic. And there may be some commentary in here as well. Also, what you can do is if you're looking for marketing, you can type in marketing. And it will give you things like marketing worldwide, statistics and facts, target audiences. Uh, so you do have um, some reports that you can access and download. And again, this gives you um, some information about the details on it. Uh, but yes, you would be able to download this and this is what you'll get. And this will not have an author. It's basically target audience. This will be a title main entry and you just put it in by target audience, the title. But this will give you an overview of the report. Uh, profiles, that sort of thing. So this will give you information about building uh, markets or market plans. So this is something that you can use. It's a very valuable uh, reference tool to use. Now, um, the other thing you can get through the library are videos, as was mentioned in the Gale 
um, database, there were audio and video uh, items that you can view and you can actually um, uh, get information from. Uh, this is Films on Demand. Films on Demand allows you to put in a keyword and from here you have like marketing plans. It's a segment within marketing planning. Um, a definition of marketing and you have like what it is marketing. So if you're not really sure about it, these would be uh, informational databases. And you'll see that like, there's uh, marketing strategies. And what you can do is where it says like from the title, you can click on the title for the full video and then take a look at all of the segments. And if you come here, you'll notice that you'll have a transcript of the item. Uh, you're actually able to put in a keyword and have it search. Um, sometimes it does work. They've been rebuilding this for... Normally what it will do is highlight this. So this is probably still in the process of being rebuilt. But I want to draw your attention to this. This is the download icon, which means you can download the, art, um, the transcript as a PDF file. If you come here to segments, you'll see a number of items it shows you like meeting customer needs, analyzing, researching, and all like that. So this is something you can use very nicely. And then underneath the canvas, you have the source citation. And this allows you to um, copy and paste this particular video citation directly into your paper. There are a couple of little things I will mention. Again, you don't need the access date. And then the URL that is provided is generic films on demand uh, URL. So what you want to do is up here in the URL box, um, you want to copy that URL and paste it into your source citation. And the reason for that is it provides this little bit right here of easyproxy.ctcd.edu. And that's going to allow anyone that clicks on that link access to this particular video. So that's Films on Demand. Then there's another very good one. It's this Academic Video Online by Alexander Street. Um, <clears throat> if you click on the search icon and then type in marketing and then scroll down, you'll have articles like this. Um, marketing, you have, uh, this is like for beginners, uh, Veteran Entrepreneur's Guide to Marketing. And so you have a number of videos if you want to market like your brand. Um, you can click on a title. You'll notice that it has a citation feature and you can choose the citation style that you're wanting. And so you would click on that and it will change the citation. And then you just copy and paste that right into your um, paper. Now, when you click on play, right here you'll see transcript. And you have the transcript right there. Again, you can actually um, search within the transcript. This basically you would probably go and have to uh, put your mouse here and then just run it up and then copy the entire transcript to your to a file uh, maybe a Microsoft Word file so that you have the transcript. Uh, you can also share it. Um, you can send the permalink the embed code or various other places. And then you can uh, share it like through um, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, Pinterest, that sort of thing. Uh, so what you would do is just, uh, just click on the copy and it will uh, copy that to the clipboard. So it's a very nice, easy database to use and you may find it very interesting.
Okay, so those are the databases and how to access them. Now, if we go into the catalog right here, I can again type in my keyword, and I don't have to type in a whole lot of it. I can type in, I've got marketing, marketing management, marketing strategy, research, <clears throat> uh, market, se <clears throat> market segmentation, and then a marketing skills handbook. So this is you know, a way of getting material. I'm going to just stick with marketing. Now the catalog does what we call discovery searching. What that means is that you can find books, ebooks, streaming videos, um, articles, and sometimes websites or um, links to e-magazines. As you can see, we have quite a bit here. Uh, what I can do is I can limit items to uh, the subject. And so I want maybe business and um, economics. And if I'm not sure which ones I want, I just click on just the business and economics. That gets rid of anything else. And you can see that that got rid of a substantial number of items. If I want only print books, I can uh, use print books. This brings me down to um, 359. And if I want to make sure that they're current, I can say the last five years. And that brings me down to 22 items. Now, some of the things that you'll notice with our print collection is it will tell you if it's available, where the item is located, and the call number. Uh, up here in the right corner where it says site, I just choose the source citation style that I'm wanting, and it gives me the source citation already uh, created. All I have to do is copy and paste it into my paper. Now, if you do not live within the close proximity of uh, Killeen or Fort Cavazos, what you can do is click on the title of the item and then scroll down and you'll see what other libraries worldwide have this exact same book. And you can uh, put in any city, state, zip code, or country and see who would have it. But this gives you, since there's only 31, uh, you'll see somewhat of where they are. And what I can do is, let me just come here and put in, let's see if it's in London. And it looks like the closest one is the Leeds Beckett University. It's in, Green, uh, in Great Britain, but it's like 169 miles away from London. And this gives you um, a map to show you where it's located. So if you're in that particular area, um, this will allow you to find that. And there it is. So that's how you would use this particular function. And then down here, you'll have other items like this. So this is a way of getting uh, books that may be of use to you. And if it's something that is um, not uh, in any area near you, uh, you can always go and use interlibrary loan and have either this library or your um, local public library. Uh, you can request it through interlibrary through them and then it gets sent there. Now, ebooks, uh, the only difference between an ebook and a print book is the format. And by that, I mean one's electronic and one's in hard copy. So, like this one here, Entrepreneurship Marketing Principles and Practice of SEM Marketing, um, you can just click on View Ebook. And this will give you the ability to read the book online. You can download the book and have it for 21 days on your computer. Um, after the 22nd day, it disappears from your computer. It self-destructs. Uh, you also have the ability to download chapters, and you have a maximum of up to 115 pages. 
Um, you can also um, copy a number of pages up to 69 or you can um, download pages um, up to 115 pages as well. There is a citation tool and it defaults to MLA and all you would do is copy and paste this information directly into um, your paper. So that's very, very nice. Um, now if I come down here to the table of contents, I can click on any of these items in the uh, table of contents and then it brings up a search within the book. So if I want, say, planning, this will tell me how many times it found that keyword in uh, the book. These triangles tell me where I'll find information. The longer the line, the more information I'll find. So if I click on one of these little triangles, it will take me to the first listed one and it highlights it in purple. And if I come down here, you'll see this here. Um, if you do an in-text citation uh, for this, you'll notice up here this says page 56 of 448, but you're still on page um, 55. Uh, about midway down the paper, the pagination meter, this thing here, uh, increments to the next page. So you always want to take the page number from the source. So that's how you get an ebook. And then you can always clear the limiter by clicking on the little blue X. Uh, you can also get, um, do that, and I do have some videos. Now a word about videos. Um, videos come from films on demand. Um, what you want to do is first start searching through the databases. But at some point in time, click on the link to Films on Demand in order to open it. And then once it's opened, you can do searching in there, but then you can close it, go to the catalog. And what that does is it uh, alleviates a little glitch in the system where you might be asked to supply a username and password. Uh, for your Films On Demand account. And um, by opening up Films On Demand first, you have that ability to um, uh, skip that. So like social media for business marketing, it will take you right to the video. And again, you have your transcript, you have the segments. So this is something that, like I say, you can use very nicely. To find material. Okay, um, you also have some e-journals and you so you have like marketing news that you can access the journal. And when you see something like this it means the only access point to this was through uh, the EBSCO database and we no longer have access to that. So um, that's just something to be aware of. So that is how you use the catalog to find material. All right, now if I come back here to the library, let's talk about getting help from the library. One way is to come into the building and say, I need help. Uh, if you're not able to come in, maybe because of weather or distance, um, you can use the Ask a Librarian feature. Ask a Librarian allows you to send us um, an email. You just fill in the form, give us your question, and then click on Submit. This is something that the library does monitor 24-7, 365. So you should have a response back within 24 hours of your sending a question. When the library is open, that turnaround time is actually anywhere from a few minutes to maybe a couple of hours. It all depends on what else is going on. But when we're closed, like uh, we have the MLA, MLK holiday coming up on Monday, there will still be somebody on call to answer any questions that come in. If I go back to the library and 
some of the other services that you'll find. Uh, if you click on Contact Us, this will give you our direct email address, our local phone number, and our toll-free in and out-of-state numbers. Coming down a little bit more, uh, we have a live chat and text chat uh, service. The live chat, you would just type in your question and um, probably within a couple of minutes you should have an answer back. If it takes longer than that, it's called somebody got up from their desk and was delayed in returning and they forgot to turn this off. Now, the chat is with a live human being. It is not a chat bot. So um, that's just something to be aware of. But you can also use your cell phone to send us a text message at 254-400-2275. And we'll respond back with a text to your phone. Now if I come back up here, um, we do have for citations, we have a citation resources. This will give you information from like the Purdue Online Writing Lab or the OWL. It will have um, information about in-text citations. There'll be a sample paper that you can use. There are also some quick style guides for MLA and APA that you can click on. If I click on the one for MLA, you'll see that it tells you general formatting how to handle uh, in-text citations for one author, two authors, three or more authors, or unknown author. Then down here you have the works cited. And it will have for books, um, how to handle something that's an ebook, or videos, films on demand, and articles that might come from uh, the databases. <coughs> now, the library also has a writing center and the writing center uh, is a twofold operation. The first bit is it's a physical space, uh, it has four computers in it and two small study rooms. Um, this is also where if we have any kind of little workshops on how to use MLA then we'd bring people into here. Uh, but this will have the ability for you to use the computers to do your research and to write your paper. There's also style manuals in there, dictionaries and thesauri. One of the other aspects of the Writing Center is the Research Paper Review. Research Paper Review is the library's um, proofreading service. And what you can do is when you finish your paper and you have a final draft, not a rough draft, a final draft of your paper, you would email it as an attached Microsoft Word file to this email address, teaching.learning at ctcd.edu. What you'll do is you'll attach your paper, email it to us, and then within 24 hours, uh, you'll have back two proofreading reports. We run your paper through Grammarly and give you a grammar report. And then we also look at your paper for readability, flow, logic. We look at your formatting, the in-text citations, source citations, and we'll put bubble comments in the right margins. These are designed to give you guidance and direction. If there is something that is um, incorrect or a misunderstanding of something, We'll put little comments sometimes to that. The purpose is to help you have the best paper possible. So this is something that you can do. Now, when the library is open, the turnaround time, again, can be anywhere from like 20 minutes to a couple of hours. But this is something like the um, uh, email that you can ask questions. Papers are looked at 24-7, 365. So on Monday, when we're closed, there'll be somebody on call reviewing papers that come in. Coming back to the library's page, <clears throat> um, you have research study guides. And let me see what we got here. You can type in a um, keyword. And we have a bunch here. Let me go like this until to look for seminar. 
and we have a number of seminars on demand. Ah, here it is. There is a seminar on demand for Marketing 1311, and all you need to do is click on either the graphic or on the link, and you'll be able to watch this video. And you'll see that it tells you the kind of topics that are covered in the, um, in the seminar recording. So you do have that. Um, <clears throat> now, if you need like one-on-one -on -one assistance, you can come here where it says request a seminar or appointment. And this will give you the ability to select a staff member. Now, there are three options, uh, and sometimes there may be more options, but the no preference is going to give you the first available um, librarian. Uh, my colleague, Miss Oser, does appointments only in person. And I do appointments in person, over the phone, and over the web. So what I can, what you would do is you would select my name and then pick a date and then pick a time and tell it to continue. Uh, you'll put in your first and last names, your email address, and you'll have these three options of in-person, telephone, and I provide the telephone numbers to the library, so if you want to give a call, or you can request an online WebEx meeting um, session. If you choose this third option, what you will receive back will be a WebEx meeting invite and um, that way I can make you the presenter and uh, you can show me what kind of difficulties you're having and that way you it's like virtually being side by side at a table is the best way to do it and then you would confirm your appointment and what will happen is you'll have an email with your confirmation and the librarian that is selected will have an email indicating that there is um, an appointment that's needed. So this is something that uh, is good to know about. And it works very nicely too. Um, there are some research, um, some videos that you can watch as well. Uh, the videos, we're in the process of updating them. Um, but this will give you information about MLA, how to search the databases. Now, some of these are a little bit dated and will so show how to, to search um, maybe using the EBSCO database, which we no longer have. So we're in the process of updating all of these. There are also various seminars on demand. And again, this one here um, has... Um, uh, out-of-date information as far as what databases to use. So the one you want to use is the one through that um, research study guide or lib guide. So that's how you get help from the library. As you can see, it's quite a, quite a lot of items here. Now let's talk about formatting your MLA style paper. I have a mocked up paper it's for a different course but you notice it doesn't look like much uh, it's not an MLA style as far as the font the line spacing or anything like that so what you can do there are a couple of tricks to putting this quickly and easily into MLA style format the first thing is the font and so if you do a control A that highlights everything in the paper then do a right mouse click come down here to font and then you just have to type in the first few letters of the font name Times New Roman I want regular size 12 and then down here where it says set as default we make it for this document only okay and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't sometimes you have to come up here and use the magic box to get it to go there we go. And then what I'm going to do is, while this is still highlighted, I'm going to come down here to where it says paragraph, 
and choose the line spacing to be double. And you can also use this icon here for that as well. And then just say OK. That puts everything into the double spacing that you're needing. Now, the other thing I need to do is my paragraphs need to be indented one half inch in. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the text of my paper. And I'm going to come and I love mice when they're working. Let me re-highlight that. And then right mouse click, come here to paragraph. And right here where it says special, there are two options, first line and hanging. I'm going to click on the first line and tell it OK. What that does is it automatically indents all of my first lines of paragraphs in one half inch. Now, this little bit here, this is what's known as a section header. And MLA says this is actually flush with the margin. So I need to do a little correcting there. And what I have, something that looks like this. By the way, this is how you handle a, a chart. I'll get into this a little bit later on. There we go. Now, the work cited is always on its own page. Uh, work cited is just regular font. Now, the source citations that you see here, these need to be in a hanging indented paragraph format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another right mouse click and come to paragraph. And under special, I'm going to choose hanging. And that puts that automatically into the hanging indention. The thing to remember is that your sources need to be in alphabetical order by either the author's name or by the title if there is not an author. But all of these are, uh, all of these sources have at least one use within the paper. If you've got sources that are listed here that are not used, you can't list them. Uh, also, if you have uh, a in-text citation, but it does not have a corresponding works cited uh, citation, you may find that you get points counted off because it should have a source citation. So, now, um, up here, what I'm going to do is put in the header. MLA says that you just need your last name and the page number. So what I'm going to do is click on the Insert tab, come here to Header, choose the first blank one. You don't need this one here. Just choose the first blank one. And then come over here to Page Number. Say Top of Page, and then the third option. That puts the page number um, in at the right margin where it's supposed to be. And then you would just type in your last name and hit the space bar once. That's all you need to do uh, to put the header in. And then just come up here to design and click closed. And you'll notice that it tracks very nicely. So you have that. OK. So um, and then the, this is something that we've noticed a lot with MLA papers is the date format is day, month, year. And the month is always spelled out. Uh, the title is centered. It's not bolded, underlined, or anything of that sort. And then we have the paper proper. And I have um, something like this. This is an in-text citation. The article title was only two words. When you have an item that does not have an author, you use the first one to three words of the title. And that's all you really need. But having said that, I will point out this one here. I've got something called McDonald's Corp. Corp. And then in square brackets, I have something here notable. Um, that's because I have, if I go down to my work cited, down here, I have one, two, three very similarly worded um, items. 
And so what MLA says is when you have three items that are um, with the same title, like this one here, McDonald's Corporation, you pick up the next element and you put that into square brackets. And that's how your reader knows which one is which. Uh, and that's what you're seeing here, highlighted here in uh, yellow. Now, when you have a book or an article that you're citing from and it's the only source in your paragraph, the first time um, you'll use the author's name and then the page number. And then if there are not any other sources in between this one and this next one, all I need to do is to provide the page number. Now, if you've got an HTML article, you have to use the author's last name each time. But when you have page numbers, then all you need to do is provide the page numbers that those are from. And then again, you have like McDonald's Corporation, International Directory. Again, this is to give my reader an idea of where this is coming from, for my source. And we have, is another example of the same author and uh, same source. Okay. Um, now, this one here has two items in the in-text citation. That's because this information comes from two sources. Um, it Basically, I had to go and find what this acronym stood for from the McDonald's Community uh, article. And so I went and looked up in an abbreviations dictionary and I found the, uh, in the information that I needed to explain what um, HACER stood for. And you'll notice that when you have an abbreviation or an acronym, you always spell it out the first time and then put after it in parentheses what the um, acronym is, and that defines it. But this is why that is this way. Then we have here a chart. When you have a chart, uh, you'll refer to it in the text, and then you'll put at the end something that says what figure number you should have. So this is C figure 1. Right below it is the actual chart. And then down here I have something that says what this chart is. It gives it a title. And this is something that I need to go and cite in my work cited. Now you do have the option too of actually putting in um, the full source citation in here, and if you do that, then it um, the work cited obligation is done. But that can also take up a lot of real estate, and so you may just want to put it into the work cited, and let this be a title of the chart. So that is how those are, and come back here to the library. Basically that's the information that we have for you uh, for Marketing 1311. We do encourage you to contact us if you have any questions. We also encourage you to submit your papers to the library for proofreading. Yes there is an Academic Studio proofreading service and there is also Prowl. The difference between those two and the library is the library does uh, the proofreadings on weekends and holidays and during breaks, times when the college is closed. And if there's an ice storm, we're still able to provide that service. So just something to keep in mind. So um, if you are needing to uh, take the post-seminar survey because you want credit for attendance, uh, you will need to send an email requesting it after you have completed viewing the video. So good luck and enjoy.